Hello, you're watching Let Them Talk TV or listening to the Zeitgeist Banana podcast. My name is Gideon. I'm in Las Palmas in the Canary Islands, and I'm joined in London by John. Hello, John. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? This is amazing. Well, you're back again. And are you ready for it? We're going to start straight away. More signs. Wow. Yeah. Bad no, I've, English. I've been looking forward to this. I mean, I really enjoyed the, the other signs we did. Yeah. So, you know, more signs. Yeah. Amazing. Sign of the times. I just remind everybody who's watching or listening, if you've got any signs of bad English, I mean, unintentional mistakes that you've seen wherever you are in the world, then do send them to me and maybe we can include them in a future episode. Okay, let's go. So the next one is a fish and chip restaurant called God Save the Fish. Now, let me ask you a question. First of all, do you think I took that picture in England? I would say no. <laughs> do, you think, do you think they would ever call a fish and chip restaurant God Save the Fish? It just sounds so weird, doesn't it? It does sound very weird, yes. And firstly, if you want to save the fish, why would you kill it and drop it into boiling oil? You're not saving the fish. Why, and why would you invoke a deity to save the poor underwater creature? This is true. They're doing the very opposite, aren't they? So, yeah, it's, um, I would say it's not a very good choice in terms of the name. Yeah. But it probably attracts attention, though, right? I think it doesn't exist anymore. I took it a couple of years ago. I think the place doesn't exist anymore. It's a very bad name. And, and also, I think often you see when they have put things in English in Paris, maybe in other parts of the world, they use like a phrase that people know, like, I don't know, in, in cookies we trust, because they see on a $1 bill or American dollar bills, in God we trust. So they, they substitute that mm -hmm. with the name of the thing they're selling. And they know God save the queen. So they say, oh, God save the salad or God save the fish, because then people would recognize it. That's a very typical French uh, thing, maybe elsewhere too. Yeah, that's curious. So w would the owners be French then? In this I'm case? sure. There's no way. I think no way English owners would, would make a, a, a restaurant called that, would they? I wouldn't have thought so. No, but I think it's quite interesting that French people would have a fish and chip shop. I think. Uh, no, there are a few. Yeah. yeah, I've noticed it appearing on menus here and there Okay, in okay. Paris. Uh, so it's getting trendy. Yeah, because on, on every French menu, you have hamburgers and fish and chips. You go to Paris to get to French cuisine and you, you see most people eating hamburgers. Hmm. And fish and chips is another popular one. I think because you don't require, you know, great cooking skills. You can have somebody just you know whipping it up in the in the kitchen without a great deal of skill yeah and i guess it's just a popular dish isn't it i mean it's, it's a nice dish to have if the fish is good then it's um yeah it's very tasty isn't it yeah well, i can't vouch for that i don't know I try it. well i guess have you never tried it at all because you you don't have fish right you just have vegetarian i'm i'm, I'm pretty much vegetarian yeah you never have if, fish at all very well if, if i'm you know stuck I um, grudgingly will order the fish, but I prefer not to, I prefer to be vegetarian. Okay, no, fair enough. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the next one may confuse you. Can you see it? I can see it, yeah, it does confuse me. Okay, so this is from London, actually, Soho. Mm. I'm not sure it's an English mistake. It's not, but it's just, in a way, it's just very clever. It's the opposite. I just love this sign. Yeah, I don't think the restaurant exists anymore. It's in Chinatown in Soho in London. Mm -hmm. And can you read what it says? Well, the English, not the Chinese. You can read what it says. Tai K Lok? Yeah, because when you, whenever you're walking through Chinatown, the restaurateurs, the, the waiter, they, they pop out and they say, come in, take a look, take a look, take a look. Ah. And please have a look at memory. And then I noticed the restaurant is called Take a Look. And... No, ah. not funny. Is that, am I the only ah. finds that funny? I thought it was like brilliant. <laughs> but I, well, that, I of course, take a look. That's what they want to say. Come to our restaurant, which is called Take a Look. Okay, that's quite curious, isn't it? I wouldn't yeah. have, I wouldn't have seen that one though. It's quite, quite subtle, isn't it? Mm. Do you think they genuinely did that? 
I want to know what the Chinese says. <laughs> I've, I thought of just learning Chinese so that I could understand that sign. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I guess it's easier just to ask a Chinese person. I guess so, or just learn that particular phrase. But yeah, it's uh, oh, that's an interesting. But in a way, it's quite brilliant if it works in both languages. It says something in Chinese, and in English, it says something, take a look, or this food is delicious or something. Yeah. Yeah. It works sure. really well. It does. Yeah. I think it's quite clever. Maybe it's just very good business. Hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> so, thumbs up to that. Thumbs up to that one. We like that one. I would go there. I would recommend that restaurant, but I think it's no longer there. So right. the advertising didn't work. John, again, we're in Paris. <laughs> I don't know why I thought this was funny because the guy who runs the cafe, obviously he thinks three euros for a takeaway hot drink is very cheap because he writes three euros, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I think it's a bit ridiculous. It's just me. I just find it. What, why? Why a triple exclamation mark for three euro takeaway drink? It doesn't seem very cheap, though, does it? Either that's the whole point. Yeah. Is it? Maybe <laughs> it's because it's super expensive. He's 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 mocking us, making fun <laughs> of the tourist. Maybe yes. Or maybe everywhere elsewhere in the vicinity, the takeaway drinks are I don't know nine euros. Possibly. That's a lot of money. Just getting a coffee to take away. It's a lot of money. It is a, a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, perhaps there's a tax on having takeaway coffees and normally they are expensive. <laughs> I don't, don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. So be use punctuation with moderation. That's my tip to you. Indeed. But per, per, perhaps so by doing this, he actually succeeded because you noticed the sign because of his exaggerated punctuation. So perhaps you wouldn't <laughs> have noticed me. otherwise. Only me. Only you. Okay. <laughs> I think so. He's just really excited. He seems really excited to write that sign. Yeah, just three euros. Wow, and you can have any, <laughs> any bad coffee you like. <laughs> Maybe it's very good coffee. It's mm. an excellent coffee. I think in these tourist areas, they're not generally very good. That's another okay. story for another day. Right, sure. <laughs> hey. Okay. I've got a couple more from restaurants and menus. You ready? John, when you look at menus, I mean, it's incredible. The English, I mean, I've got hundreds of examples of bad, badly translated menus. I don't know why the, the, the owner of the restaurant doesn't just check with a native speaker, get someone online to correct the English. Instead, they just go directly to Google Translate or wherever. And just, just a couple of examples of um, bad translations, which really confuse the, the customer. Emperador a la paria. Where, there you are. That's, That's Spanish. Where, is there a fish called an emperor? I don't, I, well, I don't really know, to be honest, but an emperor would be Caesar, for example. So you're going to grill Caesar. Is that well, right? exactly. I think, yeah, exactly. Exactly what I thought it was. Is it you grilling Grill Emperor Hirotito, Napoleon, Atahualpa, the last emperor of the Incas. Which emperor are they going to grill? No, yeah. I, I did check that and it should be uh, Merlin. Marlin, sorry, not Merlin. It should be Marlin. <laughs> Marlin, yes. Okay. Yes, Marlin. Okay. But it doesn't take much effort to find out that Emperador in English is Marlin. Why did they get that so wrong? And they're also, just emperor, they check the word for an emperor. Yeah, you know, they, 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 they translate it literally. And you would have thought that that's quite a universal English word as well, that most people would know around the world anyway. And the thing that I find curious is instead of saying grilled, they've said grill, which yeah. seems strange because everything else says grilled. So well, why would you get it wrong? On it's an imperative. Grill yeah. the emperor. Grill him now. Or her, <laughs> if it's a female emperor. Also, it's interesting, grill actually has a different meaning, doesn't it? As in, you could say to interrogate somebody, you would grill them. So, Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that. I didn't think of that. So, I must yeah. say something about Chinese restaurants in Spain, if any Spanish people are listening to this, because, uh, and I've been visiting Spain for you know, a long, long time, for, uh, you know, 20, 25 years I've been visiting Spain. And 
if you ever go to a Spanish restaurant, every Spanish, every Chinese restaurant in Spain has the same English mistake, mistakes. I think back in the 80s, one guy translated the menu and it spread across Spain and it's always the same. And one example of the error which you always have is uh, arroz con tres delicias, which they translate as rice with three delicious. Rice with three delicious. And it's always like that, rice with three delicious. And I want, I, I want to go in and say, delicious what? <laughs> rice with three delicious what? So the, how, uh, how, what's it supposed to be? Uh, delights, I think. Delights. If you ask me, delight. Well, rice with three delights. Uh, okay. But yeah. they put in an adjective instead of a noun, so just confuses people. I know it's a small thing, but it's just you know everywhere. And I want it to be correct. I want if you know when I shuffle off this mortal coil, I want to have left my mark. And if there's one thing I can do, it is to correct that mistake on Chinese menus in Spain. So please. Go out there and tell the Chinese restaurateurs to make the menu right. Well, perhaps when you retire, that could be your mission, just to go around all the signs in the world and correct them, you know, kind of go in, offer to print them for them and, and correct them properly. And... I'd have to live for 100 billion years before they all <laughs> get corrected. <laughs> We're just scratching the surface of the iceberg. Just give me a couple of examples here of, of many. I'll give you one more. The, my point is that sometimes maybe the translation is correct, but it just sounds so bad in English. And here's an example. This is from Portugal. I can't remember where, I think in Lisbon. And they've got salgado, oil cake. That doesn't sound very good. And then they've got risol de leite. Towel, excuse my Portuguese. I don't really a piglet oil cake. Yeah. Would you would you order something piglet oil cake? Would you ever order that? I don't think I would enjoy the idea would of having dare? a pi piglet oil cake. No. I mean, <laughs> so I can't think of any more disgusting. Maybe it's absolutely delicious. Well, I don't eat meat, but maybe it's absolutely delicious in Portuguese. But let me tell you, no, that doesn't work. Find a better translation. Yeah. I mean, you just have a vision of a small, well, a piglet on top of a cake covered in oil. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. We're going to have nightmares tonight. Yeah. It's something out of a horror <laughs> film, isn't it? Or something. Yeah. This. Even oil cake. Why, why would you want to have an oil cake? Yeah. It doesn't sound no, very tasty. I'm just going to have some oil. Yeah. Some cake with it. Because I, I think the thing is with that, I mean, I guess it would be, what would it be though? I mean, obviously they use some kind of oil, but would it be olive oil? I mean, even if you added the word ol olive, it would make a difference. I don't know. I was guessing it's something like a donut, but maybe nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. a, a, a viewer or listener can let us know so what are oil cakes. Yeah. I do, And send us one in the post. <laughs> Send, send John. Send John. John will leave your address. His, John will leave his address. Please send him some piglet oil cake. And then we can show it on, on, on the camera next yeah. time. Like a, yeah, yeah. A I'll send a picture. Yeah, you can send a picture of us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, yeah, I don't know. I said the nightmares. They, <laughs> they come to haunt us. But, yeah, yeah, that wouldn't be nice. Mm. Yeah, even meat puff. Well, it's a bit, a bit closer, but it still sounds a bit strange. Specialities. What specialities? You can't just say specialities. Because it's going to be what? What is it? So, would you like a speciality? Well, I, not until I know what it is. No, <laughs> no it's special. It, it's really special. Yeah, I know, but I want to know. Maybe it's not a speciality for, for me. It's not, you know. Yeah. But I, I have seen above it. They did, did actually say croissant. They didn't say an increasing. So that's good. But, <laughs> yes, it's true. But they, uh, they, it does look as if... No, called... no, that's Portuguese. That's the Portuguese side. Yeah, Who knows but, what they put in English. I didn't. No, well, on the English side, it looks as if they've they've just put butter something. So that so that looks like a mistranslation yeah. as well. Also, one thing you may not have noticed is that especialidad is uh, number four hundred seventy three on the menu. So I mean, there are four hundred seventy two other items. Yeah, it is a long menu. It takes an hour just to go through the menu. Yeah, that's a huge menu, isn't it? And yeah. 
that that's curious though isn't it i suppose you could so you could say instead of saying i would like an oil cake you could say i would like number 470 please yeah now john sometimes you know i'm always correcting english mistakes but sometimes i just see i just see a sign which goes what even if it's in a foreign language and it's just so wrong so we're not talking here about grammar mistakes but this one i saw in paris and it's at McDonald's, actually. They had a sign. Again, I think the, the sign's gone now. This was a couple of years ago. And it says, the sign says, Uber, 24 heures, sur 24 heures. Open 24 hours a day. Open 24 hours a day. And then there's a little asterisk said, except between 2 and 4 a.m. So <laughs> now, call me old-fashioned. Call me old-fashioned. But if it's... If it's open 24 hours a day, it's open 24 hours a day. You can't have it's open 24 hours a day, but not between two and four. That's terrible, isn't it? Especially from McDonald's. I think that's very poor. McDonald's would never lie, would they? Um, no, they're a very honest and lovely company. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as I said, that's nothing to do with English. It's just uh, one of the strange ones that I, would, I saw. Would, was that at three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I was trying to get in. Uh, it wasn't at three o'clock in the morning, but um, you would yeah. be rather upset if you were there at three o'clock in the morning, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Well, this one's open. It says it's open twenty-four hours a day. Oh, it's not twenty-four hours. Mm. Very okay. disappointing. Very yeah. disappointing. I was in Mumbai, John. Okay. And they speak English in Mumbai. But some of the signs, should we say, are unnecessary or they give you too much information everywhere. Too much information. And this sign here, maybe you'd like to read it. Sure. Dear guest, please add water before switching on the kettle. Thank you. <laughs> I, feel, I feel that that sign's not really necessary. I guess they, they may have had a few people switching it on without water in it. But why? <laughs> you, go to, you go into the hotel room and you think, ah, oh, there's a kettle there. I think I'll switch it on. Okay. And yeah, I like, I like all, sw kettles which are on. Oh, it has a function. Oh, you meant to heat up water with a kettle. Oh, I didn't know that. No, it just seems there were always unnecessary signs. And this is one of them. Yeah, that's a curious one. I mean, maybe it's because, you know, there are countries that don't have kettles, do they? I mean, I guess that's quite a British thing, isn't it, to have a kettle? So maybe that's why. But why would you switch it on? I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps you would think it was a heater or something. I've got a theory about this. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are a lot of people who have jobs who have to justify their job and they're the sign writer and they don't have much work to do. So they just write signs. It seems to be like that in B Mumbai, that there's just signs everywhere <laughs> unnecessary. Well, it you might know. be true. Yeah. I mean, you know, I guess the sign writing union is very strong. So they probably have to do at least 10 signs a day to keep in business. Right. Yeah, exactly. Please put on your trousers before leaving the hotel room. <laughs> it's all these unnecessary things, really? Okay, I never thought of that. Please don't walk naked in the walk. streets. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I, I don't know. I think it's just too, too much too signage. Much. Yeah, it's <laughs> going too far, isn't it, really? And, John, now's the moment. You can tell everybody, who are you? And we have a podcast, English with Monty. So you can find the lovely Gideon on that too. And um, very worth, well worth listening to, I would say. Probably, possibly better um, in some ways. <laughs> Thank you. So listen to English with Monty. Listen to Zeitgeist Balana. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.